Do you see my screen? Yes. Okay, let's uh, start with game of life. And this is a chapter where the rules are, uh, yeah, it's about game of life. Has anyone heard about game of life before the course? Yeah, I can guess because it's a very popular mathematical uh, problem. And uh, this, uh, we, we start by discussing one dimensional cellular automata. So cellular automata is a, is a kind of way of simulating systems. You have rules for the system for each cell according to itself and its neighbors. So we kind of look at what's happening at our lattice site and our immediate neighbors in order to decide what's going to happen in the next step, okay? This is as simple as that. And if, you, if we have one dimensional cellular automata, how many neighbors do we have? Two. On a one dimensional line, we have two neighbors and it's myself and two of my neighbors. There are three elements to consider to update each cell at each time step, right? And if I have two finite states like live, living or dead one or zero for each state, these kind of, these kind of cellular automata problems is uh, especially in 1D can be uh, identified by eight rules because every cell has itself and it's two neighbors and all of them can have two different states one or zero it's two to power three right so these kind of set of eight rules determine the different kind of these all these 1d cellular automata models so what happens is that you have you look at the current pattern and this is like every cell the one in the middle and the one on the left is its left neighbor and the one on the right is its right neighbor. And then if the configuration is like this, it means that the, this cell in the center is going to take this value in the next generation or in the next line, right? And if it is like this, it will be this, it will be this, blah, blah, blah. blah. And this will change, this set of rules will change for different kinds of simulations or different kinds of games. Is this clear? So for example, we can take a, an example, this is a, this is what's called 184 rule. And you can see that here are the sets of rules and this is what it generates. You see that what's going on here is that a, a chessboard grid is propagating as it is downwards. So if it is black, white, black, white, black, white, or I mean, yellow, blue, yellow, blue, one, zero, one, zero, one, zero, it will continue propagating the same way. And if there is a block of uh, ones, you see as here, they will propagate to the left. And if there is a block of zeros, they will propagate to the right. And you see that if there are equal amount of blocks that are like kind of meeting each other, you see that block of ones propagate to the left and right, the zeros propagating to the right kind of meet each other and they kind of get canceled by one another. This is one kind of example and it's uh, how it's propagating in time. And here you have another one. It's kind of a, uh, it is increasing in kind of in, in terms of one. So here you start with only one, only a single one in the center. And then you see that it's expanding over time, right? And it has slightly different rules, but this importantly seems to be symmetric, right? How do I understand that it's symmetric? For example, I look all the, potential asymmetric ones, one, one, zero is one. And on the other hand, zero, one, one is also one, right? One, zero, zero is one and zero, zero, one is also one. So this gives me the uh, symmetry. All the rules are symmetric either from right or left. This creates a growth symmetrical in both directions. 
Another rule is 30 rule. This is more complicated and this can actually create kind of uh, very kind of uh, unexpected or unpredicted behavior in long term. And these are the rules. Is this clear how to generate this kind of one do cellular automata? So we have rules and we, you cannot come up with your own rule. Try to see if there is something interesting coming up and try to see what's going on with these kind of iterations, okay? And keep in mind that this can be symmetric or asymmetric. These growths in one direction can happen and then in the other direction may, doesn't have to happen. So some, some of them go like a pyramid, right? Like going this, and if you have an asymmetric growth or asymmetric rules, you, it can it can grow in one direction like diagonally, but in the other direction it can just go flat down. It can really depend on the the set of rules you define. And what happens if we have two dimensions? In this case, we have to consider uh, two dimensional neighbors, right? And uh, this there was a question in the last lecture about the neighboring. And if we want to consider four of our immediate neighbors, this is called the von Neumann neighborhood. So we consider we are interacting with right, left, top, and bottom. At each time step, we are looking in what is, what is our current state and what, is, what are the four neighbors doing, immediate neighbors that are four of them, right, left, light, up, down. And Moore neighborhood is considering also the diagonals for each cell in two dimensions. How many neighbors do I have then? eight, right? Four immediate neighbors and four diagonal neighbors, these, these four. So I have eight neighbors. This is what we do in, uh, in Game of Life. We consider all eight immediate neighbors, or, or not immediate, all eight neighbors also including the diagonals, okay? Of course, you can think about uh, radial systems. So if you, if you have a system that is, uh, that can be much more uh, intuitive in polar coordinates. If you are, for example, simulating galaxies, clouds, etc., it can be more meaningful to have this kind of approach. And in this case, rules are defined. You define the rules according to your neighbors in polar coordinates. Of course, this is not as trivial because uh, uh, the number of neighbors you have changes according to what is your radius is. However, this can be very powerful if you want to simulate uh, polar systems, okay? Systems that have radial symmetry. Is this clear? Okay, so what is uh, Game of Life? In this lecture, we are going to discuss this. Game of Life is a game that we assume each cell in a lattice has it has life or not, which means it's either alive or it's dead. And each time step, an alive cell can continue to be alive or die, or a dead cell can become alive or continue being dead, okay? So the, rule, the rules are very simple. A, a, li a li live cell dies if it has fewer than two live neighbors, okay? If you have two or three live neighbors, and if you are alive, you continue living. Okay, for example, here, yeah, this cell, it has three alive neighbors, it's happy, it's gonna continue to live. And if, if it has only one alive neighbor, it cannot live further and it is gonna die, it's indicated by this unhappy face. And then if you have too many alive neighbors and if you're alive, like in this case, if you have four alive neighbors, you die in the next step, okay? You become dead. And if you're a dead cell, you need exactly three alive neighbors to become alive, okay? So this cell that is dead here, since it has one, two, three alive neighbors, it will come to life in the next step. Is this clear? So these are the rules. That's as simple as that set of rules that is uh, maybe if I can, the other simulation is still running. I need to cancel it. I can go to. Here is a, a is a simple, very simple example code. You can do you see it? Yeah. 
here you can regenerate this is randomly initiated so you if you try to set restart it will start to initiate randomly you can already see some interesting things here for example a square is kind of stationary if it's alone if it's not in contact with anything external it's kind of stable and this is kind of also a periodic structure and this is kind of still and you can see for the square it's trivial right because every cell if you have, if you have a square every cell has three neighbors that are alive and any cell that is outside of the square that are dead don't have uh, three alive neighbors so they can never become alive they have only two and of course there are more interesting things like glider i put here like an initial condition that it resets to and this is just an example of a glider so that is uh, propagating in time in four steps it's going in one step in diagonal i will speak about this in a in a second and also there is more like a kind of a more complicated structure here you can see that uh, this kind of configuration creates a uh, a periodic motion of the of the top left here and then these are kind of firing gliders in one direction and they are kind of of course due to the like i have here a periodic boundary conditions that is going to ruin the thing after a while because they are going kind of through the boundaries and hitting back to itself and like creating this kind of to die but uh, yeah you can always set back and here are more like there is space available here if you are not lazy to just type the initial boundary conditions initial conditions for any kind of structure you want you can see what's going on in time and just click here of course you need to save it in a proper format but yeah is is this clear any questions so far no okay so as i told you there are lots of interesting things happening and uh, the least interesting one is the still life right here all the alive cells have three alive neighbors which is which means that they will continue to live and all the dead cells none of them have three alive neighbors which means that they will never become alive so it's very boring it will continue to be like this this is also similar here some of the dead cells have too many alive neighbors for example this one have five alive neighbors which means that it it, it can't become alive and uh, all of the alive cells have exactly two alive neighbors which means that they will continue to live and uh, the ones outside also have less than three alive neighbors so they cannot become alive so all of these examples are kind of examples of still life it's very like uh, stationary nothing will change as if there is an there is not another effect coming from the outside and there are also oscillators here you can see that this cell here has exactly three alive neighbors, right? This means that this is gonna become alive in the next, but this one here has only one alive neighbor, which means that this is gonna die in the next step. The same for this and this. Of course, these can't become alive because they have only two alive neighbors. So in the next step, they will become like this. And uh, very similarly in the, after two steps, it will go back to its initial state which means that it will keep oscillating forever between these two configurations. And not every oscillator doesn't have to have a period of, period of two. There are more complicated and larger oscillators that have a larger periods that it can be five step, 10 steps, 20 steps to come back to its initial configuration. And here is another one that is called the beacon. I don't know why. Uh, so this is kind of, uh, you see that this, cell here has three alive neighbors it will become alive and this cell here is the same and once they become alive they have four alive neighbors which means that they are going to die in the next uh, step and it will go back to the its original configuration and then the last one there are gliders what this means is that you, you this one you have to think a little bit more carefully but what is going to happen is that this cell has only one alive uh, neighbor, right? This is going to die in the next step. And this cell here has three alive neighbors, exactly. So this will become alive. And also this one has three alive neighbors. This will become alive. You can, after this one, you can see which ones have one, uh, exactly three alive neighbors. Also this one, 
and this one will become alive in the next state. And uh, this one will die. Why? Because it has four alive neighbors. And once you get here, you can iterate the same logic. You get to here and then you get to here. After four time steps, what you observe is that you have exactly the same structure that you had in the beginning. The only difference is that you moved one step or one step on up and one step left. You moved in the diagonal direction, right? Is this clear? There are a lot of like uh, different structures and Game of Life is the one of the chapters that you can find so many material online. If you Google Game of Life or even better YouTube Game, game of Life, you will find lots of fascinating structures, uh, simulations that have uh, fantastic initial conditions. People have been investigating. It's uh, something that mathematicians really love and they have been studying this for a very long time and really, really complicated things have been demonstrated here. And uh, like there are lots of other things that are called, for example, spaceships. And uh, they are essentially gliders, but they have a very large period and they are very complicated structures. If this video runs, here you see a few like kind of uh, how much free time people, uh, game of life people uh, had. So you can see that they they have been creating all these kind of different shapes. You see that this is, for example, a periodic structure. You can see it, right? This is a periodic structure. And it's really have a lot of like elements and it's repeating itself with a certain period. And this is the same. So these are kind of more complicated oscillators. And you can also see uh, there are lots of different examples that you have fractal kind of dimensions. The point is that you can just put on YouTube really game of life and you can find, and this kind of set of very simple rules that you have three neighbors, two neighbors, you continue to live. If you have three neighbors, you become alive and you have so many different like possible configurations. Like you can see that sometimes things can go really like you can zoom in and in and in forever kind of and zoom, you zoom and out and out, out. They, they are very similar structures repeating itself. It's a, it's a very interesting game. This one was, sorry? I don't know, Joan. Yeah. Yes. If you consider it with me, I mean, it's more fundamental, I would say, than mental. One of the interesting aspects is, I think some of, well, for sure, at least one of you, but maybe more than one, thinking about that. One of the questions is about studying complexity, how often complexity emerges. That's a very nice aspect because you can study this very well with this kind of system because you have a finite number of rules. It can be very large, but it's finite and it can be, essentially, you can have a dictionary with all the rules. So you can ask and answer questions like, how often you get something interesting out of a system like this. You know, the problem with the, the um, topic for instance, and so on. So one of the questions, why there is intelligent life in the universe and then maybe you can ask everyone, but if this tool says that, well, if there was no intelligent life, no one will ask the question, therefore it's obvious that there is intelligent life. Then multiverse and so on. Well, this is a toy model in which you can study these kind of things and quantify them. So you can answer one of the questions we make is essentially 
how often complexity emerges and it goes in that direction. So if you take a system, as you will see that if you increase the dimensionality, it becomes less likely that you get something interesting. So in a 1D, uh, well, it's a game of life, but when we have in 1D, there are many cases of interesting system when you go to 2D, 3D and so on, it gets more difficult to find a set of rules that are actually not trivial with fun. And you will always get some noise, but to produce something interesting. So this is the kind of thing that you can do with a game of life that are actually interesting for uh, scientists. On the other end, as you were mentioning, so say you can implement a game of life with another game of life. It's also true that uh, these kind of systems uh, are uh, too incomplete in some cases. Some rules are too incomplete, which practically means you can implement anything that you can do with a normal computer on uh, such system and call that a property. If you want to study these kind of things, it's also a useful tool because it's simple. Hmm? In principle, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But would it be better than the existing computers? No. I mean, the point is this you can simulate a computer within a computer, which sounds ridiculous, but I mean, you do it very often. You know, Docker to start with. I mean, or uh, many, many programs, what they do is to simulate a computer within your computer. Have you ever heard about Java Virtual Machine and so on, and uh, MATLAB? They create an, inter an interface within your compute hardware and your and your uh, software, and that's a virtual machine. So it's a computer simulated on your computer. So it's not so absurd to do that, even though it sounds absurd. But yeah, you can create in the game of life or an equivalent uh, accelerator automaton, something that is uh, has the complexity of a computer, and then you can use this to simulate another game of life. <laughs> Anyway, if if you think that this is an applied thing, then it's otherwise not. Is the question answered? I don't remember who asked the question. But yeah, I mean, try for example, if you want to have an idea of how difficult to come up with uh, similar rules that will have uh, equally interesting results, try. You will you will find a lot easier to find a one-dimensional example set of rules. They will give you something quite interesting or beautiful, depends on how what you define as beautiful. But mathematicians have a really low threshold. So uh, what you can do is that you can to try to get some random eight. There are not a lot of options, actually. I don't know, eight, two to power eight, or something like that options you have. So the different rule options for 1D. And you can, anything you randomly guess is going to give you something uh, reasonable or good looking or like something that is interesting in 1D and try to replicate it in 2D. Change the rules of game of life. How many neighbors you are alive or dead, or I don't know, come up with a different algorithm. Maybe it can be also directional and try to see something equally interesting. It's not so easy. And try to do what's happening. What can be, what can be done in, in terms of such a, uh, to, to observe such thing in, in, in 3D, for example, it will be a lot less complicated because uh, the rules, the, the amount of rules you can come up with is uh, so much higher in 3D. You can see here is uh, really like, uh, yeah. If you look at things like, I don't know, this one, for example, you see that someone, they really had time to design uh, these kind of things. But of course, this is a very, the, the advantage of Game of Life is introducing for you to the, how to simulate cellular automata. So you have a grid that you keep the numbers of each uh, uh, element, and then you update at each step. And of course, when you update it, you don't implement the changes as you update it, you save it for the next step. Is this clear? Because I can, I can show you what it can create problems for you. Is this one, if I, everything that is going to happen in the first step, I decide on the zero step before changing them. For example, if I can tell that this, this cell is going to, this cell is going to become alive, right? In the next step. And then, if, the, I, if I make this alive before I check this cell, 
it will result in this. When I check this cell, I will say, aha, this has two alive cells. So it will continue to live. This will create a problem. You understand the problem? So you have to change, update all of them at once for the next generation. Is this clear? So you maybe one thing you can say in the standard game of life, you have to do like this. You can also choose a different game of life, which you could update randomly periodically. You can, it's not forbidden, no. but you will not get the results we expect. Yeah, but you can also, for example, try to see, like, choose a certain. This is what we do in icing model. We choose a random element in the array and just update that value. Of course, this will create. Uh, uh, not a deterministic output, because if you choose a random element each time and update it according to the rules, this will result in, the output will depend on what you choose as an input, right? Which means that you have a random parameter, which element in the lattice you are going to change or look at first. This is going to change the behavior of the system, depending on which one you choose. Is this clear? Yeah. And then there is also, it's not here. Uh, the majority rule. Is very. Uh, I mean, the rules are very simple again. So here we have. A, a, a people that are voting for something, right? And. Uh, if I have, yes, there is a question. My battery is low. You are absolutely right. But why is that? This is switched off, damn it. I mean, nothing works. It's no surprise that the projector doesn't. Does it work now? No. No, just a second. Where? Yeah, that's why projector doesn't work. Now we have a better idea. Yes, now it works. Thank you for the warning. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a little bit, I don't understand why this, something has changed so much. Last week we had a, projector that was running and we had an VGA cable. So I was like, I don't need to check it. It's already there, the cable and if everything works and I come here and the projector doesn't work and the cable disappeared. I don't know. Uh, yeah, the camera. Yes, that is very, maybe this is the cable for the camera. Probably. That is probably not, that is actually powered anyway. So majority rules, the rules are introduced here as follows. So if you have a, so, So consider there is an election. So you vote either zero or one. So there is two options you can choose from. And here you kind of, you have an opinion of your own, right? And you have eight neighbors. If majority of your neighbors vote for one, then you vote for one, which means that more than four of your neighbors, you again consider eight of your neighbors, more neighborhood, all the, including the diagonals, and then, if you don't have any, uh, <clears throat> if you don't have a majority of neighbors that are voting for one, which means that majority of your neighbors voting for zero, then you also vote for zero. And if you're exactly four and four, like equally distributed opinions around you, your opinions kind of don't change. So this is the kind of idea or the model, which makes sense. It may happen in real life. If, you, if all of your friends think one thing, and then at some point you start to think maybe they're right, even if you think the other way. And it's the same way. You are more likely to change your opinion if you see a lot of people changing opinion or in the opposite opinion around you. If you have an opinion and all of your, all of the people around you think the same way, it, your opinion won't change. And here are some examples. You can see that uh, uh, 
Where is the P defined here? So here you can see the initial fraction of volts of one is P, right? So depending on if the initially we have more people that are voting for one, it will e eventually uh, uh, converge to everyone voting for one. And if you if it's equal in the beginning, it will have this kind of complicated structure, but it will kind of uh, cluster around together. People that are vote for the same idea will cluster together, even if the overall number is equal, which happens in real life. So it's a, it's actually a nice simulation. And you see that if you, if you have uh, initially less people than fifty percent that are voting for a for for certain opinion, they will uh, kind of still cluster together, but their population will be decreasing over time. Is this clear? So this is also another kind of simulation that is made, uh, can be made by cellular automata. And there are lots of other things. For example, you can make a cellular automata that is continuous. For example, you don't have to be zero or one. You can create a system that can take any values between zero and one. And instead of making a condition, if condition, you have two or three neighbors that is alive, then I will continue be to alive. Or you can make a function your kind of you your state being alive is kind of a number zero being really dead one being really alive running in the football pitch all the time kind of and you can kind of have a scale for how how much life you have in each cell and then this can be updated as a function of your immediate neighbors for example this can demonstrate actually maybe more accurately like some kind of biological systems and you can in this case instead of only having one directional motion like in game of life, you can go in one direction or even the gliders, you, they can propagate in one direction, one of the four directions, or they can also propagate diagonally, but they cannot really go in any random arbitrary direction or propagate. The, the changes in the system are always in four, in eight directions, let's say. But if you have a function that is updating or more continuous kind of game of life uh, functions, and you can, uh, you can Google these things. You can find different kinds of formulas or, or kind of rules that are continuous. And this creates a, a behavior that is more continuous and resulting motion of the systems. They can be rotating. They can be propagating in certain directions. It won't be such discrete directions like eight directions you can propagate in. Is this clear? Yeah. And also you can effectively have different kinds of periodic motions as well. You can, instead of like, blinking one direction and another, you will see systems that are kind of rotating around each other. You can explore a lot of different things. Any questions about Game of Life? I see that uh, a lot of people chose Game of Life for the homework demonstrations. Any questions about the homework? No, everyone uh, understand what they need to do? I have, I have a couple of questions. Someone has a question. Yes, let's listen. Uh, yeah, one one is about the cellular automata, and one is about the homework. Yes. So the cellular automata it's rule thirty, I think, that has the that develops uh, chaotic dynamics. Um, and I'm just curious, what like how do we know that those me mechanics are actually chaotic? I, I don't know if there is a formal definition of chaos, but does it map to the logistic regression in some way, for example? Uh, I'm not, did you hear the question? I can repeat the question. Question is that why is, you see my screen, right? Okay. Yes. So rule 30, let's go back to rule 30. It's here. So this one is uh, also shown here. This is the result. And these are the, these are the rules for rule 30. And this is the resulting uh, shape. What you see here is that there is a complex behavior that is not like the other ones. The thing is that the update of this one is not really straightforward and the, the structure looks complex, right? Mm -hmm. And this means that, uh, I mean, the, the definition of chaos, I think the, the small 
change in the initial condition is going to create a huge difference in the output. And uh, for example, for this one, I could have another one in the beginning that is alive and they will kind of come across each other and it will grow in a different way, but its shape will be very similar. The same with for this one. I could create another beginning initial condition, but the evolution and the structure of the lattice will evolve or the from the look of it or the periodicity, the rate of ones and zeros will be very similar or predictable, let's say. But this one is if I had another one here, for example, in the beginning, the, the resulting output would have been really different. That is, I think, what they mean by chaotic. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, of course, if we know the initial situation, we can iterate and calculate all the rest. And another thing is that if I am looking for, for example, what happens in 100 steps for this one, I can kind of generalize it, the one in B, for example. Because I know what's happening here. They are kind of... Uh, growing with certain periodicity. And here also, I know that, the, for example, the blocks of one are propagating in each step to the, to the left. The blocks of zeros are propagating to the right in the next step. So I can kind of predict what happens in 10 steps, 100 steps, right? This one is not straightforward to calculate what is happening in 100 steps. I cannot directly look at the one line and say that in 100 steps, it will be like this. I have to really simulate every single step. I don't know if that answers your question. Uh, yeah, it 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 does. It's just, I was thinking about what you said in the previous lecture about the Brownian dy Brownian motion not being chaotic just because it's unpredict unpredictable. So yes. uh, I'm trying to understand what I'm trying to get a better intuition in my head. Just what is the difference between our common understanding of what is? Unpredictable I mean, Brownian motion is is uh, is a uh, is a stochastic motion in itself, right? There is randomness in it, but we know the characteristics of it. And we know the, the point is that it's not really the, the initial condition that is making a huge difference in the output in Brownian motion. It is, the, it is the random term, diffusion term. That is the force that is acting in random direction. It can be this way, left or right, up or down, whatever. And that is the changing the output. Mm -hmm. And we can still characterize everything and we can, I mean, of course, if I take a Brownian particle and I want to predict what is going to happen to this particle after 100 time steps, I cannot know where it's going to be exactly, but I know perfectly the probability distribution of the particle after 100 steps, right? I can calculate it. Mm -hmm. And each time I realize it, it will end up in a different place, but it will end up kind of in a... Uh, according to my probability distributions that I can predict. This one, however, is affected strongly by the initial condition. So small change in the, in, in the initial configuration of the, of the lattice is going to create a big difference in the final output. And if I want to go a lot of steps ahead in the future, I don't really have a way to calculate it be, be without simulating every single step in between. Mm -hmm. I can maybe, that's the best explanation I can I yeah. can provide. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, you had another question. Uh, yes, about the homework. It's just the the, the questions about the specific uh, um, game games of life, like the still life in the oscillator. It says write a function that uh, that can you can you can you name the number of exercise? I think it's four point five through four point. Uh, you yeah, mean four point three. three to four point yes, five. Uh, yes. So is write a function. Does that mean an analytic function or or a code? Function? No, no. It's a it's a code. It's the code that is evolving your your system. I mean, it's a, it's the code that is running the. It's a little bit. Yeah, I understand that it's a little bit unclear. You you have a function that is iterating the lattice, right? That is your function. You just apply the same function to to each each one. So so, so it's about setting the initial conditions to. The initial state to yeah to exactly the, you set the initial yeah. condition for each ones you you put this kind of condition this one this one this one and then you iterate them with the rules of game of life and show that they don't really change over time and the other mm -hmm. one is show that these ones oscillate and show that these ones glide okay yeah gotcha okay Thank you. are there any more questions about any of the homeworks this week so I hope everyone has understood that there is a timetable and most of the people I see have booked the correction. 
So the idea is that please be there on time and uh, there will be some instructions on the screen. You can come to the class and correct there in real time in person, or you can join via Zoom that both of that works for us. And especially the first week, it might be small delays. You can be 10, 15 minute delayed to, to be checked. So be patient, we will be checking a lot of people. And uh, if you have any problems with any of the homeworks, please contact us before 9 p.m. tomorrow evening, because we don't really have a way to help you there. And uh, you may end up not being able to complete the homework. So please, if you have any trouble in any of the homeworks, contact us before, okay? Okay, then we complete the lecture here. Thank you very much. Uh, there is one announcement. But we will ask everyone at the form of correction whether uh, they already have a group. So we'll double check. So maybe delay until Thursday to make final decisions on the project. And uh, come here so we can check if this person has come now that finished the work. And if you are missing a group member, pass by here. So we check if they register for the homework. Because if they didn't register for the homework, I think it's a good uh, uh, chance that they are just skipping the course. One very important thing about the homework, there were a few people that asked me, that is that you register for the homework first 